So I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this here, the uh, people of Canaan. Uh, I had some interesting conversations on Facebook where people were sending me um, very strange links uh, to a Twilight Zone as well, where some aliens came from some outer space and they called themselves something very closely relating to the word Canaanite. <clears throat> So very varied history, of course, with a lot of catastrophes due to the um, the way the land um, is split into different sections, which um, made life there sort of either quite cozy here, was very fertile. The hill country could be well defended against enemies. Um, but, you know, you had to really plan ahead to put away what you were getting from the soil to survive, you know, from one growing um, um, time to the next, you know, from one season of harvest to the next. So you had to really use your brain to think ahead, right? And this was also a very um, fought over transport route between the continents here and the different empires so lots and lots of mixture of different um, uh, uh, different people who resided here yeah mixed and interbred as well and you know here the battle of Megiddo is mentioned there was a last battle when the Ottoman Empire fell and the British won at Megiddo right and the Final battle, battle is also obviously planned for that place there, which is the Battle of Armageddon, right? Now, in in conjunction with this, I'm, of course, listening to my Steiner stuff. And um, he takes you through the Johannes Evangelium, so the... the um, uh, oh, got one of the apostles talking, you know, one of the books of the apostles in German, obviously, and he talks about how in the ancient times we've, we've just talked about love and that in order to have this free love, you have to be, you have to have free will and the development of the human species in my last video, I was explaining all of that and how it leads to um, the fundamental requirement of absolute freedom of choice in order to, you know, bring forth true love. Well, he, he's talking about the fact that in the olden days, obviously people married with it. They, they, they did sort of close um, marriages, yeah? You married within the old, the own um, uh, tribe, basically, Um but to the time, what's the time of the Old Testament? Um, uh, we're coming to an end. This this stopped, and then people would would start to marry beyond the um, the own tribe. It was um, sorry, uh, marrying beyond the own tribe, but staying within the same race. That's what he's saying here, right? So, a, a Jew would would. Um, marry a Jew but you know just from a different village kind of thing um, and for that reason for the the marriage to uh, in Canaan uh, Christ does not go to a wedding in Judea but in Galilee where they practice marrying within different tribes so here he mentions something else in, in that uh, old tribes said that Children, they um, who who came from parents who were closely related, were the most enlightened. They were zomnabul, i.e., having special um, faculties to stay in touch with the higher realms. Now, guys, uh, who's been practic practicing incest for hundreds of years, and why have they done that? Why have the pharaohs married their sisters? in order to keep that ability alive, maybe, of contacting other dimensions. So you, 
by marrying within different tribes, you lose that somnabul, uh, somnabul um, ability, this this showing, this, this looking into different dimensions, but your intellect increases, which is very interesting, right? So the next thing he's starting to describe what happened um, in an esoteric sense at this wedding in Canaan, what, what is being described, what process or what is being foreshadowed there. So we, we get told that the mother of Jesus was there, which um, shows that at that point the authority of the um, uh, blood relationship was higher than the free eye, this this entity that we're all striving to birth, right? This entity, this free ego that can freely decide between good and bad and, you know, choose love over hate, etc. I choose to bond with somebody from a different genetic line to yourself in order to improve your intellect, to go further away from your somnabolic, um attributes but to gain something else instead so then the wine was running out uh, says the mother to Jesus they have no more wine he's then remarking that the first drinker of wine was Noah and later they had this Dionys the Dionysian cults and wine then specifically drugs people into matter yeah it's a spirit and it it uses or it, it brought the human being to becoming more egotistical and to no longer be servants of the the good of the all um but be a servant to yourself you know which also cuts you off from the higher words from feeling in a one with the higher planes of existence this is what alcohol does to you so then Jesus says to his mother, what have I got to do with you? My my time is not yet come. And he says properly translated, it has to, 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 it has to uh, be translated into what goes from me to you. So because the mother here stands for this kind of being that, you know, weds within the tribe and is somnabul and... Um, hasn't got this ability to develop free will, which, you know, why he says, my time has not yet come. So the relationship between me and you has, in, in, that, in, the, in, in the context of that story, has got something to do with the blood ties between him and his mother. So at that point, Christ's mission hasn't yet arrived. And what has to be done has to be done in the service to the mother. So now the goal is to make people more egotistical, to uh, draw them out of this connection to their own tribe so that he can develop and freely give his love from the eye to the eye. So therefore they need to drink the wine. So he goes to this place where, not, as, as a natural um, development of this intermarriage of the tribes, the, the, the viewing of God disappears or becomes more difficult. He changes water in wine. Um, wine, however, stops you from seeing God. So he's done something which will cut the human being even further from God because his time is not yet come. The, the human being has to sink deeper and deeper into matter so that in future he can see or give himself to God in love freely as a free human being, as a freed ego, as a freed I. So then has Jesus changed water into wine? No, because natural the natural law cannot be broken through miracles. Even the gods would, would you know, um, contradict themselves. No, because Jesus has 
uh, withstood the tempter in the desert and and didn't um, change stones into bread, must you fall, right? To show that he didn't break natural forces in that forces of nature. He didn't do that miracle. This is the text communicating this. This is why it's so difficult to understand these texts because the people who encoded this thought completely different. So the the New Testament speaks on three different levels. This, that what has happened physically, that which has happened in, in, within the souls of the people that were present, and that which the, the, the people that were present saw in, in, a, in a spiritual viewing. So the souls of the, the wedding guests were filled with the, with the power of Christ. They drank the water, but their souls, in their souls, they were become, they became drunk from the power of Christ. And in their souls, the I became strong and the, the connection to their own tribe, you, you know, vanished into the background, was less important because they strengthened the I, which I've referred to in the video previously, you know, this this connection, um, this innate ability to see and view and walk with God was lessened. So Jesus again talks to his mother, what, what have I got to do with you? My time has not yet come. In, in a far future, there will be a time, which is my time, where the most important things Will be, will be done through human beings, not because they are tied together via blood relationship, but by, by people who stand for themselves as single beings, as individuals, because then the love to God will be a free gift of the um, independent human being. And they can freely choose love. So then the six um, stone water um, things for the for the for the cl cleansing ritual after Jewish um, ways. So <laughs> with with cleansing back then the the uh, the uh, Oh God, I'm struggling to translate this now. The baptism was um, a form of cleansing. So his time will become when the wine will be changed back into water. And that will be when the human being will be cleansed of all materialism and will again be craving to the joinder with God. And by goodness me, I think, you know, we're reaching that point now. In 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 that very place where, you know, for centuries, the people have mixed. You know, the the, the reason why he went to the wedding in that place, because right now, the people that live here which we could call the Canaanites, right? Let's call them the Canaanites, are standing in for all of humanity because they are suffering in our stead. And the evil is being shown through their suffering, just as Christ suffered and, and showed us this evil of murder. Are they now standing in for all of humanity in order that our heart opens? You know, and we stop looking at one another as members of different tribes or having different color or whatever and see one another as living souls. Another thing that came to me today was is they're forcing, they're forcing this story. I, I can see what, where this is supposed to go and what it is supposed to do. But 
you know, what's happening is we're having all these refugees that are being pushed out and it's the effect is the exact opposite. Rather than us in time developing this recognition and the seeing of one each other's soul in the other, what's actually happening is that we're being even further driven into our little boundaries and into our little nations and into our little tribal formations, you know, one tribe against the other and, yeah, you know, the bodies and, like, good God. But I can also see, like I just said, that, you know, true compassion can be birthed now from the suffering of those people, just like... It it should have been burst when, you know, this story unfolded here of this being being tortured to death for us, okay? There is a parallel there. It's almost like it's a repeat of that story. So I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of hoping that this is the catalyst to open people's hearts in some way. Uh, it's really time that we lose the fear of one another and that we stop being or allowing ourselves to be manipulated with borders and by these interest groups that exploit all of us and play each other you know out against one tribe against the other and and making things worse and worse and worse for us so that you know we see ourselves in each other and that we can actually recognize that there's racial differences but that we can maybe exploit these in a positive way well what can that race do that my race can't do how can we how can we help one another can we can we learn from one another and and not this constant friction you know this constant not getting what's really going on here and i just want to mention another aspect here that of pareidolia i know this is going to sound absolutely insane but sometimes i think when you look at a part of earth from above it's almost like it's it's telling you a story like when you look at the shape of um island it looks like a little teddy bear or like a fetus right and by the same token if i look at this area here of land now i mean this looks to me like a female body part that you know i don't want to mention it but it's like the area where birth is happening right where the female is giving birth from i know this is far-fetched but you know I, I don't know i'm having a really weird time here of late where so much seems to be making sense to me all of a sudden and i'm seeing all these ancient narratives sort of come together for me it's a bit weird i know so i've just thrown the pareidolia in there as well so yeah in short this could be the area where the christ comes back again or whatever is supposed to spark the christ in us and it's unfolding right now and it's coming through the suffering of those people who actually their suffering is is like they're standing in for all of human humankind because you know whatever's happening there is happening to everyone and each and every one of us and we're not even aware of that and you understand that when you understand what that conflict really stands for Because it's, it's really, it's like the fight for heart and soul of this planet. Because if you can't see that war is wrong by now, I don't know what will teach you. So, okay, if, if I'm reading this story correctly, with what I've just sort of gleaned from Steiner as well, then by going to Canaan, 
by going into that country of the mixed breed, right? The people who mix with other nations. You, you, do you know that Arab means mixed mixed nations? <laughs> um, I'm saying tentatively that the spirit of Christ will be birthed through the descendants of Canaan. The Canaanites, the people who, by intermixing with other tribes, have gone furthest away from this somnambulic state that I just hinted at, or Steiner hinted at, and that I found out a, a long, long time ago that it is believed that if you marry within your own kind, you keep that connection open. Um, and that through the suffering of those people right now, because, I mean, look what's going on. Look, look what's going down at the moment with that whole rigmarole. And what is it doing to the people who are watching and observing what's going on there, right? In that area of the world, in that birthing place, in that part. It's, um, and then that story of the story of Canaanites. Okay, this is Russell Dobular filling in for the aforementioned Jimmy Dore, joined by Keaton and Kurt. Um, all right, you know, the atrocity. My time has not yet come. The time of the opening of the heart has not yet come. That's what I'm seeing. So because there will be a far, far away time, a time which will be my time where the most important people will be accomplished through people. Sorry, the, the most important things will be accomplished through people which are not held together by blood ties, but through such people which stand for themselves. And at that time, the love to God will be a free gift of the human being capable of free choice and free will, not dominated by blood ties. So the light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. That means before we individualize, we, before we have developed that I, that ego, that individualized um, consciousness, we could not comprehend love. So the light, the love, shone into the darkness, but the darkness, the human being, the human soul, did not um, ergreifen. It's more than comprehend. It did not grasp it. It just completely didn't understand it. And we had to undergo this development, this process that I've been trying to explain in my last few videos. This free coming to love that can only be achieved if you fall into matter, go through this process of evolution, of learning what it's like to be in a physical body, learning all the pain, all the, all the drama of the human condition. And then your heart being opened. And hopefully, we're seeing that unfold right now. If we're lucky and it's not a forced story. You know, which, if the time isn't right, could, could bring the exact opposite about. <laughs> 